Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, machines and machine freaks. We are starting out the day in the Duramax. Beautiful, beautiful weather. It was supposed to rain. We don't got rain. I love it. Some showers just got done passing at the crash carrier. It's clearing up now. I had my handy dandy ladder out because I was working on the roof. But after Mother Nature wanted me to work on something else, I've decided to work on something else. So I got this piece of plywood here, but it is going to be used on the roof. I'm going to have a little bit of a drip edge here. How I was originally going to do this edge here, this is the back of crush. Here's the Duramax, here's the, the loading ramp. How I was going to do it was I was going to wrap this piece of aluminum that came from the roof and wrap it around this piece of wood to form a waterproof seal. However, if I do that, then what will happen if the door is up, there will be some sealing stuff on here, but still, you're going to get that little bit of dripping and over time, a long period of time, it'll just rot out the back of the truck because water, mother nature always wins. So if I take this piece of plywood and extend the roof like another two inches from the seal, and that'll prevent a lot of water over time from getting into the trailer and then maybe drop the leak factor down to like 99.99%. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a very effective rate. However, it's all theory and it always will be, so we'll just send it. Okay, I got my board cut. Now I'm gonna throw it up into position. Maybe. This is what I was talking about, about the drip edge. Now this is totally over-exaggerated, but this is basically the, the, the methodology behind what the drip edge will do. It'll go over the door so it can't seat behind the door. Now I'm gonna cut this back end off. Oh no, gotcha. Let's see what's under this puppy. Hopefully not uh, anything alive. Luckily there were no rabid possums under the crush carrier. Another piece of good news, the mounts to the GoPro giveaway just came in. As you guys know, there's only five more days in the GoPro giveaway. Buy anything at machinemerch.com. You're automatically entered for this and this. I just kinda wanna dive into this because I'm sure a lot of people are interested in what's in here. I don't want this stuff getting dirty so I gotta get some paper towels. <laughs> Now there are still some things in this bag, but this is 95% of it. You got an alligator clip, I don't have that. You got a handlebar mount, I don't have that. A floating selfie stick, don't have that. Selfie stick, don't have that. Suction cup, got one of those. Head strap, and chest mount. It even comes with a microfiber towel so you can get the shot. Like I said, there's only five more days to this giveaway. Let's get back to this 3D Machines production. I wonder how much weight I've shaved off the crush carrier while we've been in construction. Cause you gotta remember, we had another 10 feet. Like it wasn't just a frame there, it was a whole nother room. And a whole other tip out. One of those things right there, and those things gotta weigh three, four, 500 pounds a piece. And then it was waterlogged, and then it had aluminum on top of there. I think that's a difficult question. I really, really would like to know that. And the only way we could really figure that out is if I took it to the weigh station, but this thing isn't really ready to go down the road because there's no structural integrity. Those cabinets were acting as its structural integrity, and as you can see, we have no cabinets at the moment. I'm going to build one wall right here to begin with. So that'll tie the middle together, and then we'll have our steel reinforced door in the back here, and we'll have our wood frame up there like it was originally. Jake showed up to the warehouse. He's uh, reminded me of a few things that I have currently forgotten. Uh, one of them regarding a shirt that uh, went missing a few times in the mail. How long ago did we really order that? Do you remember? I think there was still snow on the ground. Four months, three months ago? I think Seth got his three months ago. So, and, and then it, it takes like, like 30 days. days. Yeah, so it's, it's been like four months. I just called them. So uh, Jake's been machine shirtless for the last uh, four months and he's going to continue to be shirtless until these people answer our phone calls and emails. I just, I just literally called them. We also had a metal mole uh, come in and out of the warehouse while Jake has been here. He likes to come out of right there and just likes to cruise on over here, do a couple donuts right about there and then just head back. It's quite entertaining. I don't have any foods and he's staying outside. So uh, I'm just gonna, what should I do? But Jake's got new wheels for his vehicle. Those do have some tread on them, don't they? Yeah, not bad for 25 bucks a piece, including the rim. He got all four tires and rims for a hundred bucks. No, not on the Sonoma. Uh oh, that's gonna explode within the next couple months. Is that when you hit the UPS guy? <laughs> no, that was a different vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to put that in there or no? Hey, how many hit and runs have you been in? Hit and run? Or, or hits. Well, somebody hit me here. That that was not your fault? No, I was at college. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's right. Did you ever, did they ever get the camera footage on that? Yeah. 
Did you ever get compensated for that? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? Yeah. <laughs> She looks good, just a nice little uh, microfiber cloth, a nice little buff, and that'll come right out. We're trying to come up with a game plan of uh, whether we can ride or not. Jake's calling Seth currently. Hey Seth, what's up? Yeah, I know. Hey, you want to go riding tomorrow? I don't. Jesus, shut, stop backing up, dude. Just sit still for a second. Just sit still for a second. Hey, you want to, uh, Dalton wants to go to the lease land. Are you interested in going tomorrow morning until like two o'clock or something? Yeah, I, I can do that. I gotta, I gotta work my truck. What do you gotta do? I break it. All right, that doesn't take long. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. All right, I'll, uh, I'll text you more information later. It sounds tonight. like Seth's in uh, crush, though, on the other hand. He uh, needs a wheel put on him, and I've got a secondary filter. There, there's an air filter, and then there's a secondary filter. The secondary filter, I can imagine, has never been changed. I did take it out, and it was really, really dirty. But this is what a secondary filter looks like. It's kind of a pain to put in, but uh, it's, it's definitely needed. What is it, a secondary air filter? Yeah, otherwise you're going to start tearing out, you know, your, your rings, your piston, your bearings everything inside your engine. How come my dirt bike don't have two air filters? I don't know. Somehow your seals on your air filters suck. So you should definitely have like a secondary filter system. Because how many bikes have you blown up? Two, three, four? It doesn't matter. <laughs> too many. I, 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 I'm trying to forget about them. Too <laughs> many is the answer. So we got some sort of game plan, huh? Maybe? Yeah. So, okay. So he wants to ride. And I got to do those two things. Do you want to hang out and do that, and I can get you some cookies and a slice of pizza or something across the street, or what? I mean, you're kind of looking like you're dying over here. I'm hungry. I am hungry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll buy you some a slice of pizza, maybe some chicken wings. Uh. I was thinking about going downtown to like Reds or something. Oh! I'm feeling like a hot dog, like a full on hot dog. What's up? I don't know how I feel about the the sound effects on top of the hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> Two hours later. I'm happy to say that Crush is now mobile again. We got the tire back on. There is no significant damage to the tire. I saw a little tiny bit, uh, just a little rub, but nothing severe. However, when I did take this thing off the bead, um, I hit this right there. I don't believe that chunk was in the rim, so I, I did hit something too. So it looks like it was a combination of both a huge rut and potentially a rock or hard substance. Like a Jake Taylor snake muscle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sun's out, guns out, huh? Have, have we established what time we're gonna take off tomorrow or is that still in the works? That's still in the works. That's still in the works? Do you know where the secondary filter is on a Yamaha YXZ 1000R? No. 2016? Up in here. It is up in there. It's, it's on the uh, victim, I mean passenger side though. The good thing is, is it is clean, so we should be able to take it off with ease. It's in this piece of plastic right there. So we had to take off this piece of plastic on Crush. It's currently on the ground right here. Jake's also on the ground over here. Um, there's like 10 screws into this box. This portion of the air filter comes off. This is where your air filter, your first air filter is. And then this is your secondary. And it looks just like this. While we're down here, let's see what this looks like. I only put like, what? 20 minutes on this air filter, so it should be clean. And the air filter is definitely clean. Okay, there is a little bit of brown right there. Yeah, this looks pretty clean. We'll clean it up a little bit more. I'm not sure if I ordered a new one of these or not, but uh, I actually ordered two of these things. And what's funny is I bought the one from eBay, and it's OEM, and then I bought one from an actual supplier, and not only was the supplier more expensive, but then the shipping was more expensive, and it took longer. I'm gonna have two filters. One of them I paid like 60 bucks for and the other one I paid like 30 bucks for. You win some and you lose some. Man, you're making yourself all sorts of comfortable up there, huh? I'm trying to, I'm trying to you, you're using new moves that I, camera all of a sudden doesn't wanna focus. You are definitely using moves that I did not try using the first time. I was always down here. I took this piece of plastic off to make it a little easier, but uh, Jake's not taking that procedure. He just wants to go ahead do a couple backflips, get on the back end there, and then just uh, heave her at a 90. We're here with Jake and his side-by-side -side comparison. Here is the original filter. This may have just come with this thing like stock. Um, it's pretty, pretty dirty. 
And then here's our new one, which is pretty without the dirty. Both the secondary and primary air filters are installed. This will be the first time I've ever owned Crush where this thing has been breathing like completely clean air. Jake, what do you think? Oh, I think it's gonna fire right up. I'm hoping that it fires up better than it's ever fired up before. Currently rocking 168.6 hours. <laughs> Cuts on and off. I think something with the uh, the volume just is screwy. We can try to hook it up again. But that fired up pretty good. I like that. Yeah. We'll let it sit for like 30 seconds or so. Give it a couple revs. See if it does that. Uh, uh, or if it's like, wham, let's go, baby. You know what I'm talking about. I'm excited. I'm always excited with new parts. I love new parts. I just don't like installing them all the time. Did I tell you that I failed tech inspection the first time? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. You didn't even have like the right equipment. You didn't have the shut off thing. No, the first time, no. The first time in South Carolina, they passed me no problem. Oh. <laughs> well, they told you you needed stuff. Yeah, they told me that they didn't want the kill switch there. They wanted that right there. But I get to the tech inspection. I didn't tell you this? No. In Ohio, I failed. Why? He told me to go back to the camper. Why? Because this, this kill switch wasn't working. We can see if it's working right now. Yeah, see that? It's because the stator's making too much power. So all I gotta do is have a load on it. So as soon as I turn on my high beams or low beams. Let's see it. This is a little better. Oh yeah, I'll show you that. Oh yeah, it's on high beams. Kill switch. See? Huh. That's all you gotta do. Who told you that? Little trick. Well, when he told me that the stator was producing too much power, I just thought to myself, I just need to create a load. And then all I did was turn on the switch. My dad's like, oh yeah, turn around. Crush is ready for tomorrow. Are you? No. Really? Yeah.